Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Honours Information Evening. So, like I said, we're going to start on time. If you know of anyone missing this, you're welcome to ask me for the recording afterwards because we, um, we are recording this. Okay, so a quick overview of what we will be covering tonight. Uh, firstly, some reasons why it is a good idea to consider doing an honours degree. Then a, an overview of the honours degree, the multimedia honours degree, how it works, and what the entrance requirements are. Then we'll take a look at the degree itself. What are the modules in the degree? What can you expect to do and to learn? Uh, there'll be a project showreel so you can get a better idea of the types of work you'll be doing. And um, then we'll talk a little bit about the VRI lab, which is the essentially the facilities where a lot of the honors stuff happens. Then we have two honors students sharing their experiences. And then lastly, some admin details if you are interested in doing the degree. So firstly, what is an honors degree and why should you do one? Well, it is a one year postgraduate degree. That is the case throughout the country. And it introduces additional specialization on top of everything you learn in undergraduate. So if you'd like to go deeper, learn more about a specific topic or um, go in, uh, like go into a, yeah, a greater level of detail, I guess, um, of a specific topic, then that is what an honors degree does. It is also a stepping stone to a master's degree. So if that's something that you want, you will need to do an honors degree first. And in case you are unsure, the progression is undergraduate, honors, master's, doctorate. So you have to have each of the previous ones in order to do the next one. So if you want to do any sort of postgraduate degree, then an, under, an honors is necessary. It is a way to turn a three-year degree into a four-year degree. Uh, this is something we often tell students in multimedia because they ask if they can go overseas with a multimedia degree. And the answer is usually yes, you can. Even with a three-year degree, most companies will accept you because you have the necessary skills. But in order for your degree to be, um, I guess, officially recognized as a degree, um, you need it to be four years because overseas, they do a four-year undergraduate degree. And so this will turn your three-year degree into a four-year degree, which will make it officially internationally recognized. It is also a way to figure out what you're really interested in. So if you're unsure what to do in honors, oh, sorry, if you're unsure what to do after work and um, you're not sure what exactly, yeah, you wanna spend the rest of your life doing, then an honors degree is a good way to explore different topics so that you can get a better idea of that. So the BIS Multimedia Honors Degree specifically is a one-year degree if you do it full-time or a two-year degree if you choose to do it part-time, nothing longer. It is presented after hours, starting at 5.30, usually for an hour to two hours. It's mainly application-based work, which means you won't be regurgitating knowledge onto a piece of paper like a test. If, if there are tests, there'll be application-based theory type, uh, sorry, essay type questions. Um, but most of the time it's project-based and you will deliver a, something that you've created uh, at the end of the module. And it's specifically built with a lot of room for you to explore topics that interest you. So there's a lot of open-ended assignments um, and things where you could choose your own topics. And that is done intentionally so that you can explore the things that you find interesting. It also includes the opportunity to take modules from other programs within the School of IT, being informatics, information science, publishing, and computer science. This doesn't mean there's a limit. I think it's two, two modules from um, another program but you can go look at those, um, those courses and you can see if there's any modules there that interest you and you can then expand your horizons by doing modules from those degrees as well. So the entrance requirements for the degree are as follows. You need a multimedia undergraduate degree or an equivalent degree, meaning we accept people from Open Window or Vega or computer science or informatics or, well, maybe not informatics, I don't know, it depends. You have to have a good level of programming knowledge, as well as a decent understanding of design in order to be accepted into the degree. Along with that, you also need an average of at least 60% in your multimedia modules, as well as an average of at least 60% in your final year, third year computer science modules. Or if you don't have that, you need a combined average of 55 to 60 in those modules. Um, if you have the second condition, then you will be on probation for the first semester of your honors degree, which essentially means you're not allowed to fail any modules in that first semester. Otherwise, you can be asked to leave the degree. 
So it's um, generally quite easy to get in. If you've passed your undergrad decently well, you can get into honors. I recommend applying even if you don't have these um, requirements because uh, it's quite a flexible um, process in terms of being accepted. So apply anyway, even if you think you might not make it. Okay, so moving on to the different types of modules in the degree. I'm going to run through all of them. The first three are compulsory, meaning if you take the BIS Multimedia Honours degree, you have to do all three of these modules. Firstly, there is INY711, which we call research myth, uh, because it's quite crazy and um, like a little bit wonky because you have to learn how to do, how to follow the process of research, which if you've never done it before is daunting and very new. It's um, a little bit similar to what you do in IMY310 when you sort of do it like usability tests, but a lot more steps and many other things to add to it. And so this module is run within the uh, Department of Com Information Science. It's taught to all the, the honor students within publishing, information science, and multimedia. And um, it will teach you all the steps you need in order to do research properly. Now, the reason this is important is because most of the rest of your modules will require you to do some sort of component of research. And again, if you choose to do a master's degree after your honors degree, then this is absolutely essential. So this is a really, really important module. Following this, we have IMY 772. Um, and this, I mean, it's called Markup Languages Hypermedia. It's now a practical web development module. And in it, you have a, you have a sort of like a, a team with industry experts and they work with you to advise you on a specific project. And essentially at the end of the day, you develop this project using the latest web technologies and uh, they act like a client of sorts and you essentially develop this project for them. And this is a really good module uh, to teach you uh, an introduction to full stack web development. So again, compulsory, but really, really helpful. Last compulsory module is IMY761. This is our year project. So um, in this module, you, you take all those things that you've learned in, in research methodology and you use it to carry out a research project. So you pick a topic that interests you, usually along the lines of virtual reality, augmented reality, um, gamification, game studies, that sort of thing. And you then carry out a research as well as a development project. So you're doing the research, but you're also developing some sort of system or thing, whether that is a game or a VR experience or something like that to actually test your research um, question, gather some data, and then write up the results. This project is supervised by at least one of the multimedia lecturers. So you work closely with them throughout the year. Um, on various deliverables. And at the end of the year, you submit a research article that explains everything that you've done, including the results. Okay, and then we go on to the elective modules. So if you are here tonight and you're here to listen to, you're not necessarily going to take multimedia honors as a full degree, but you wanna take some modules from it, then these are the, the modules that you will be choosing from. Now there are five of them. And as a multimedia honors student, you have to do at least four, but two of them can come from other degrees like computer science or informatics or information science or publishing. Okay, so firstly we have trends. Um, this one chooses a, focuses on trends in the media currently. Um, and it looks at, sorry, this is not my module. So I'm just gonna read this, how, um, how they're being studied in academia how, and how the research is conducted and what are the interesting aspects of this trend as it is applicable to the industry, as well as the industry that you might work in as a graduate. And the topics usually range from gamification, games research, or extended reality technologies. Um, and then usually these things are quite experimental and quite fun to talk about because they're quite cutting edge. Then we have multimedia technology. Um, and like trends focuses on trends, multimedia technology focuses on multimedia technology. So again, it's a group discussion. It discusses various technologies in two contexts, um, industry as well as academia. So that gives you a good understanding of both how to use it in the workplace as well as how to research it if you were to carry on studying further. Um, and then it's also discussed in a South African context so that as a graduate working in South Africa, you have a better understanding of how to use this technology. And then we have virtual environments. 
which is basically our virtual reality module. So um, you learn the theory behind how to create a good virtual environment, what is a virtual environment, all of those things. And then you apply that theory to create a virtual reality application or experience that you choose. And um, you'll see some examples of these in our show reel a little bit later on. So it's a, quite a hands-on module because you will be learning or you'll be teaching yourself really how to do virtual reality development using usually Unreal or Unity and a variety of the toys that we have available in the lab, which we will cover in a little bit. So those are the first three, and then there's two more. There is animation, theory and practice. So in this module, we look at the various animation styles that exist and how they are created. And then the assignments um, are practical animation tasks that get you to implement these different types of animation in your own way. Um, and the final project is a 90 second natural motion animation, which requires a large amount of patience and time, but is obviously very fulfilling when you do watch your final animation at the end. Very importantly, this module doesn't teach you any software. So it is expected that you already understand how to animate, how to use whatever software you choose. You can pick what you use. Um, so if you're coming into it from a different background, you need to have an understanding of animation um, before you get started. And again, the show reel will give you some examples of projects in a second. And then lastly, we have human computer interaction. This is like the honors equivalent of IMY310. So it's really helpful if you've done IMY310 because that'll give you a good base to start from. But essentially what you're going to do is produce a short research paper on a specific topic. For this reason, it's really important that you did that research math module beforehand because that's obviously the basis that you need to actually produce this research paper. Some previous topics that have been researched include things like the ergonomics of gaming controllers, lo-fi prototyping for VR, mismatching objects in VR, in, um, in, sorry, in AR tangible interfaces, perceived weight in VR, sound cues in VR for interaction, traditional gaming controllers versus touchscreen controllers, uh, testing the principle of familiarity in e-commerce websites and text input interaction in VR. So if you're interested in user experience, this is definitely a module to consider. So that's basically all the modules in the honors degree. As I mentioned, it is a one-year program uh, full-time. So there's not that many modules. And as I said, you have to choose at least four of the five multimedia electives, or you can choose two others from outside the school. Okay, so next we have a showreel. This is um, a variety of projects from previous years for our virtual environments module, as well as our animation module. So hopefully this gives you a really good idea of what to expect.
Okay, so hopefully that gave you a bit of a better idea of what kind of projects you can expect to do. Um, next up, we have a video of Dave Carr explaining all the technology that we have available in our lab. So hopefully this also gives you a better idea of the kinds of toys that you get to play with um, if you choose to do the degree. So um, enjoy the video. So this is the VRI lab, uh, which is facilitated by us, the multimedia lecturers. And if you take uh, the multimedia honors degree, you will have access to this lab. If you're just taking some of the multimedia honors uh, modules, depending on the need of the module for that degree, you will also have access to this lab and the equipment that is provided in this lab. Um, you will see behind me there are three different rooms. We call them pods and basically um, to make use of some of the VR equipment, you will have to book a lab booking to make use of one of these pods. Um, and I'm also just going to show you some of the equipment that is here in front of me. Um, these are the equipment that you will have access to. I will be going into a bit more detail, um, zooming in a bit closer so you can see a bit more detail as to why these uh, equipment is significant and of interest to our research here that we do in the multimedia sub-department within information science. Um, and yeah, let's zoom right in to the different equipment. Right, so now that we're a bit more zoomed in, uh, I'm going to be showing you the equipment a bit more close up. And um, the first one that I'd like to show you is pretty much um, the most um, simple equipment that we have, and that is um, something that is a bit upscaled from uh, a generic Google Cardboard um, and you can see that there are lenses in here. These lenses are actually taken from Google Cardboard. This here is actually also a product of our 3D printing and um, basically you'll be developing for Android and you can slip or iOS actually um, and you can slip your device in here can hold it to your head to make use of the device to do the experience. You do have a little button here that can be made use for screen taps um, and there are slits on the side here um, for straps if you want to include it for your interaction. However, that is up to you um, to design if you are going to make use of this piece of equipment. Um, so that is the um, more simple one. I'm also then going to go to the other side of the spectrum and just show you um, this headset here is the HTC um, Vive Pro I and um, basically it's a high-end um, virtual reality headset. You may have seen it um, in the VR room in Menlin or other places that are um, commercializing VR gaming for some uh, public play. Um, this specifically is the Vive Pro I, which means it has eye tracking um, inside. Uh, we have yet to have a project that makes use of eye tracking, so if that is something that piques your interest, you should definitely um, look into it. Um, you will see that um, it has quite a few things, um, and I'm going to show you basically how it's worn. Um, this cable will be attached to a, um, a power bank um, because this is um, something that makes use of the wireless kit so that you're not too tangled when you're immersed in virtual reality. So you pretty much just put it on like so. There's a knob at the back to tighten for comfort and you can clip in to become fully immersed with the audio as well. You might look like a futuristic crazy scientist but hey, this is the future. This is the future, old man. Um, all right, um, coming with the HTC uh, Vive, you have the standard um, Vive controllers, which um, has a trigger button, has some side buttons, which can be nice for picking up objects or um, a bit more particular things like maybe holding on um, to certain buttons. You have a trackpad, um, that you can also click on the menu button as well. Um, these grip buttons can make it more immersive. One of the previous projects 
um, that an honest studio did um, is a zip line and um, it just feels more immersive to grab onto a zip line with these buttons like so than to use the trigger buttons. Um, so it's up to your discretion as to how you want to map the buttons, um, but the important thing is to make um, the VR experience um, more um, immersive and more fun or just in, in general more engaging. Um, if that hasn't piqued your interest just yet, um, I'd also Sorry about that. Let's see if I can get that started again. Hang on two seconds. So this is the VR, which um, has it, which means that I don't have to hold the staging. Um, if that hasn't piqued your interest just yet, um, I'd also, my personal favorite for controllers, um, I'm not sure if you've maybe seen a tech video about these, but um, these were AKA the, um, the HTC Vive Knuckles, um, they're also called the Index, um, and basically, um, as you can see, I don't have to hold on to them. Um, there's a little strap that you can tighten here so that you can have an open hand interaction in virtual reality. Um, you will see over here there's a slit, which means that the grips are actually pressure sensitive. Um, there are some um, Valve demos that you can play around with in the lab um, that you can make use of the grip. Um, generic buttons just on the side. Generic buttons just there on the thumb um, so that you can make use of them as well. You have a trigger button here as well. Um, and yeah, this is a lot of fun because that means you can actually pick up stuff without actually pressing any buttons. Um, they also pick up per finger um, so you don't even have to press anything they, they, you will see in the demo it picks up your fingers like this and the hand representation is quite realistic. Um, these excite me because it opens the whole world to, for example, finger counting interaction or um, you know it's just more intricate when it comes to the uh, various interactions that you can do in virtual reality. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited um, to have these. Um, I'm really excited to see some of you working on projects with these and see what you can produce. Um, and then we have one more virtual reality equipment um, that I'm going to bring to your attention now. And that is the Oculus Quest. This is the Oculus Quest 1. Um, and this is um, a really high fidelity mobile VR. Um, it doesn't quite match the HTC Vive, um, but considering that all the processing power is in here, it runs all the games here without a dedicated computer, that makes a big leap. Um, the HTC Vive um, is very high fidelity, very powerful, but it does need to be um, attached um, to a very high fidelity computer. Um, intense gaming computers um, as you will see if you um, make use of the lab um, they're not the newest computers that were bought this year but they're definitely um, very powerful machines um, so that you can develop um, to your own desire um, so anyway back to the oculus quest um, mobile vr this allows you to make use of a mobile track space that you can draw out yourself um, and you don't have to be necessarily tethered to a computer. As I've already mentioned, um, the controllers that come with it look like this and um, you will see that there are buttons over here to press. Pretty standard, most um, controllers, as you have seen with other ones as well, has a trigger button, it has a grip button and some buttons for the thumb. Um, and this will also be mobile VR um, 
but it won't be as difficult as developing for purely Android. Um, so that's my personal opinion. Um, maybe you are familiar with um, mobile development and this isn't really an issue for you. Um, and yeah, these, these are just some of the various virtual reality equipment that we have um, available for you to do research on. Um, it depends on what your research topic is. Uh, and the final one that I want to show you is um, something fairly new. None of us or even the students have actually um, officially worked on this piece of equipment. It is not virtual reality. Um, it is augmented reality. This is one of the higher, no, the most high fidelity um, augmented reality equipment that is available out there. Um, you might know what I'm talking about. It is the Magic Leap. Um, this one will definitely make you look like a futuristic um, scientist. You are tethered to um, something that is a power bank and the computer as well. Um, so let me just hold it out like that. Um, and typically how you use it is um, you would wear this little handbag thing um, and then you would put this on like so and again you kind of look like a crazy scientist it also comes with one controller that you can make use of to click and press certain buttons you will see again that um, there's a trigger button and the grip button for this one is on top above here, trackpad. So you will see there is a common theme um, with this. Um, something that is cool with this uh, headset is that it does hand tracking as well so that you can do certain things. Uh, there's a game that's on here where you can hold out your hand to create a shield um, or you can hold out your hand to um, absorb um, loot that drops after you've killed an enemy and those are some interesting interactions that you can definitely make use of. Um, I'm just going to put this down here. Uh, while I'm talking about the um, hand tracking, something that I forgot to mention with the Oculus Quest is that um, yes there are controllers but it actually has hand tracking as well. Um, there are, it, it's not entirely perfect, but it's pretty close um, for what this little machine can do. Um, and that obviously uh, opens an, a whole new world of interaction for virtual reality as well. Um, various um, hand gestures that could potentially be used for different interactions um, or just um, length um, kind of interactions. Uh, and that is all the equipment that we have in uh, the VRI lab um, and this will all be made available to you if you take um, one of the IMY uh, honors modules uh, that makes use of any type of this equipment. Um, you can um, speak to your lecturers if you take the modules um, and it's possible that um, maybe the module doesn't typically make use of this equipment but if you have a good idea speak to um, your module lecturers and um, they may uh, allow you to use this equipment. So um, with that being said that is all the VRI lab um, equipment that I've shown you. I've also just um, very simply shown you the space. Uh, if you um, have a chance to come onto campus um, and check it out uh, at some point, um, you will see the space that we have and get an idea of what it's like. Um, typically our students, um, honors or postgrad students, are allowed to make use of this lab as their own research space. Um, the open area um, does not require booking, but the pods um, behind me do require booking. Um, that's everything that I have for you on the VRI lab. Um, thanks for listening to me um, talk about the various equipment, and I'm excited to see some of you do some interesting things with these equipment. So, this is so, this is the...
Okay, so I don't need to spend too much time telling you what equipment we have because Dave just did a really good job going through all the details. But in case you wanted to look some of that stuff up, here is a slide giving you the names of the various things that we have so that you can dive a little bit deeper if you want to. Next up, I'm going to hand over to Duffy Bosman, who is going to give you a little bit of an overview of the VRI lab and the different projects that we are involved in. Hi. Um, okay, so uh, yes, uh, what I'm going to talk about is just um, a part of the VRI lab development stuff, uh, which is more um, to do with um, actual uh, practical stuff, like uh, not in a not so much in a academic sense, like do stuff for for assignments and so on, but actually do stuff for um, people who plan to use these things in the real world. So um, our lab, the VRI lab, um, who stands for virtual reality and interaction, has done um, some work for various other departments, uh, such as mining engineering, uh, medical science. Uh, there's stuff in the works for veterinary science, and we've also done work for an XRO chair. Um, so um, yeah, you know, we use various technologies. Um, a lot of it's VR based. Uh, I would say primarily VR based, but some of it's also uh, dabbled into, or is starting to dabble into the augmented reality space. Um, very uh, because of the VR angle is very heavily contingent on stuff related to 3D graphics, uh, and also includes things like digital scanning and photo photogrammetry to create, for example, uh, virtual spaces from real scan spaces that we want to recreate. Um, there's also a mobile optimization angle here. Um, so being able to uh, optimize um, like applications for, for different devices and so that it runs smoothly. Um, the stuff that uh, we have done has been uh, very much um, uh, done in primarily in Unreal Engine. So we have some video of um, existing projects. This is one, uh, the project is called, uh, we just call it Jaw Thrust at the moment. It's a project for medical science, um, just because it probably doesn't make that much sense on its own. Uh, I don't know if the video is working, but essentially uh, what the, the project is about is um, a, a specific procedure, um, a jaw thrust procedure, which basically I mean, I'm not a doctor, so I can't give you exactly the details of when and why you would use this. But um, uh, basically, it's about like when someone needs a specific type of medical care, uh, you need to do the specific specific procedure to like open their windpipe and so on. And basically, what we're doing, uh, this is the training for this um, has been done with other types of devices, like specifically built devices for um, this specific procedure, uh, but the intention here is basically to use VR to be able to allow people to train for this. And if we, you know, it's kind of a one size fits all type thing. If you can make these types of things with VR, then you can make all sorts of other things with VR as well. And you can uh, end up saving a lot of money because you don't have to build specific devices for every different procedure that you want to train people for. Uh, then the next video, it's about uh, uh, it's about a mining training type thing. So uh, this is our uh, this is demoed by our guy who is making all these things. So essentially, this is uh, the, the what you're seeing here is actually scanned from a real mine. So with like uh, what is called like laser scanning technology, and essentially the premise here is that uh, you can kind of walk around in this real mine and identify faults. So things, safety hazards and things um, that would be uh, you know, a safety concern for people working in these mines. And again, the idea here is just to allow an environment for people to train these skills uh, with, in this case, without having to actually send them down in a mine. So train a lot of, you know, do a lot of training with VR and stuff, and then you can save a lot of money by not having to spend as much time training in the mines. So we're, we have a couple more videos. You can actually check some of them out on our uh, multimedia YouTube channel. But um, 
uh, yeah, so we're not going to go through all of them. These are just the type of things that our VR uh, development has done. And the reason why we're showing you this, uh, if you can go to the next slide, is because we actually have a position available um, that we want to hire an, an honor student uh, to work as a developer slash assistant lecturer. So essentially help create these types of things, um, you know, do whatever uh, work that needs doing. Um, and then also, uh, so then your time would be kind of split 50-50 between doing development stuff for this, you know, whatever VR project you're being put on and also um, uh, working as an assistant lecturer. So we can provide a small stipend and fund your studies for a year. And uh, like I said, these are really like cutting edge industry projects like um, using VR in uh, like real life scenarios where VR hasn't really been used before and then will actually be used by uh, real people for real training purposes. So yeah, that's the thing. Um, uh, if you are interested, then uh, please do, uh, uh, well, keep an eye on the, the official communications because we'll obviously uh, make this uh, type of thing official. But if you are interested, um, it also doesn't hurt to, to contact us so that we have your, um, your name uh, somewhere on, on record as being interested. And yeah, that's it. Cool. Thank you so much, Duffy. Um, next, we have two honor students who are going to share a little bit about their experiences of being honor students. The first one is Madeline Nessler. She is currently working as an assistant lecturer for the multimedia sub department. And she is a part-time working person and a full-time honors student, but she was at the beginning of this year, a full-time honors student only. So she's gonna share a little bit about her experience, um, about how all that's been and some tips that she can give you if you are considering doing the honors degree. Madeline, over to you. Thanks. Uh, hello everyone. Um, like Anik said, I'm Madeline or Maddie, and I am a full-time honors student who is also working part-time as the assistant lecturer for multimedia. And um, I think, is there another slide? There was a slide that had something. Yes, okay, cool. Um, so I'm just gonna talk about a couple of these points, basically just covering my experience with doing honors this year, uh, which the first one being is why did I decide to do honors? Um, I'm sure, uh, well, may, I'm not too sure, but maybe for some of you, um, you're maybe considering honors because your parents want to, to. My parents very strongly encouraged me to do honors and I agreed because um, I did agree with them. And some other reasons why I decided to do honors is basically, um, I figured it would make me more desirable for future employers. Um, you know, it sort of builds on what you've already done and, it's more specialized uh, and also to build on that, um, it covers more of what I was interested in in the multimedia degree. I'm one of those people where I was more interested in the multimedia, not so much the computer science part. Um, so that was also one of the reasons why I wanted to take honors because I figured um, I could learn a bit more about the stuff that I was more interested in in my undergrad. Uh, and my experience so far, so uh, what I've enjoyed um, so far this year is um, I've enjoyed the work, which was one of the reasons why I wanted to take honors in the first place. I find the content very interesting. Um, I like that it's more focused on the stuff that I enjoyed in undergrad and I get to do, well, I've been able to do things that I've never done before. So I did animation last semester, which I'd never done really. Um, and that was, I found that really enjoyable. And this semester, I'm going to take the virtual environments module. And I don't really have much experience with uh, VR. So I think this is a cool you know, entry point into that. So I'm quite keen for that. And um, something I guess that I've struggled with or found frustrating is I just miss um, being able to go to campus. I'm sure a lot of you, some of you feel the same. Um, I think it would have been cool to experience the evening classes on campus. And um, it would also just be nice to be within the vicinity of my fellow students. I think that would have been cool. Uh, but I think that's the only downside I've experienced um, so far. 
And then advice for those of you who are considering doing honours, um, be prepared to do a lot of research. Uh, that I can definitely say there's a lot of research that gets done. And I know um, in the undergrads, research is not really what gets covered. Um, I can also suggest just prep yourself for having to do like proper academic writing. I know you maybe do some academic writing in first year. I think we did a couple of essays or something, but this is um, a lot more intense, <laughs> um, proper, like proper academic writing. So maybe prep yourself for that beforehand because that did catch me a bit off guard. I don't think I was expecting that. Um, and then, uh, I think also just stay on top of your work. It can be a bit, because there's less modules, it can be a bit deceptive on the amount of time that you have. Uh, so the deadlines do creep up a lot faster than you think they will, if, you know, with less classes. Um, so manage your time. I think manage your time really wisely and just stay on top of your work. Then um, I think my last point was um, going from doing honors without a job, um, to doing full-time with a part-time job. So at the beginning of the, uh, sort of at the beginning of the year, I was approached to um, be the AL for the multimedia and I agreed because one of the things that was concerning me was because I'm doing full-time, I would not get any work experience until I enter the working world. And that worried me a little bit. So um, I think this was a bit of a blessing in disguise because now I get some working experience, um, even if it's only part-time experience is experience. I uh, get to know what it's like to work under, you know, someone for someone and get a salary and all of that. So that's pretty cool. Uh, what it changed is the time management that I already had to do. I had to do like even more because now I have to manage obviously my AL duties on top of the university duties. Um, so just time management, that, that's been the main thing. And then um, would I recommend it to other people? Yes. I think if you are studying full-time, it is definitely manageable to do part-time work. Um, you just have to manage your time really wisely, but it's definitely doable. Um, some other advice, if you're studying full-time, I wouldn't suggest a full-time job. Uh, I don't think there would be enough time for that. And then a couple of things that I wish I'd known before starting on is, like I said before, the amount of maybe research and the serious proper academic writing, I would have maybe looked into that a little bit more because it did catch me a bit off guard. Um, and yeah, I think that's that's about it, about my experience. I've been enjoying it so far. It's, it's um, significantly less stressful for me anyway than my undergrad. So I think it's a good idea. Great, thank you so much, Madeline, for sharing your experiences. And next up we have Bevan Holborn. So he is also currently an honors student but he is working full-time and studying part-time. So he's gonna share a little bit about his experiences with regards to that. Bevan, go for it. Cool, uh, hey everybody. So yeah, my name is Bevan. Uh, I'm currently working full-time at a company called FUS Labs and I'm studying honors part-time uh, over two years. Uh, so, yeah, I'm just going to chat a bit about why I chose to do honours, what it's like, and um, try and focus on what that really means for you guys, what I think you should consider, and how I would suggest um, approaching how you consider it. So, uh, first of all, uh, why I decided to do honours, uh, up until first the end of last year, I just decided, oh, yeah, you know what, I'm going to do honours, that sounds like a a good idea and it is a good idea but i think uh what i realized too late was i need to decide why um so what i ended up doing was i spoke to a couple of people some friends who were doing multimedia honors a friend who was doing computer science honors and i spoke to a friend who was considering doing honors but chose not to just to kind of get all the different perspectives and um you know why they did this why they didn't do this what they liked what they didn't like and it gave me quite a good good bit of perspective uh, for me, the reasons I chose to do honours were one, because it does give you that four year degree, like Anik said. Um, so if you do plan on going abroad, it's not necessarily important in terms of securing a job, but it can make a difference and it is recognised out there. So it does mean something. Um, 
even outside of just jobs um, outside of the country, uh, there's a lot of companies in South Africa who prefer um, people who have done an honors degree or a postgraduate degree. Um, my company, they, I think it made a big difference for them in my application and interview when I said I was going to be doing honors, uh, they like that. So it's something to keep in mind as well. It's not just something for if you want to go um, abroad. Uh, the other reasons I wanted to do honors and I trusted it was because I just wanted to, to know more. Um, there's a lot of interesting things that they're doing, things that I find exciting, and um, I enjoy them. You know, uh, if you see things in the honors degree that you like and you're interested in, that's also a good reason to, to do it, to pursue what you're interested in, uh, interested in and what you like to do. Um, so, yeah, my experience overall in terms of, of honors, what I think is very valuable is that because the classes are smaller and, as, as you can say, they're a bit more intimate, you have a lot more access to um, the lecturers and the knowledge, and they have a, a lot of good, strong knowledge that you can utilize. And I think it's an opportunity that's not always going to be available um, to you guys. You know, if, if you're interested in UX or VR, you know, the lecturers you can talk to, and they, they can pretty much inform you or tell you about anything that, that you're particularly interested in and, uh, you know, pass along research to you or cool ideas that are happening. And yeah, that's, that's something you have access to when you're doing honors. And I think that's, that's a very valuable thing. Um, I think also what honors does for you is it, it really expands on uh, that, that reach that the multimedia undergrad gives you, you know, it allows you to dip your toes in lots of different things. And I think that's a very, very strong strength of the degree. And you can continue to do that, not just in terms of the range of things that you interact with and you get exposed to, but also the depth, you know, uh, the uh, hypermedia technology module focuses a lot on AWS, which is a big thing right now. Um, and same with VR and animation, all that kind of stuff. So uh, I think the, yeah, the reach that it adds to your knowledge is incredibly valuable. Uh, the exposure to research as well, uh, I think is, is really good. I'm, I wasn't sure going in, like if I'd like research, if I hate it, I think I'm kind of in the, the middle. It's, it's really cool, but I think I'm kind, of, I'm kind of slow with it and not so great at it. Um, so I'm kind of in the middle with that. But whether you, you, know, you think you want to move into academia or into an industry job, the, the not knowledge that you get from uh, learning how to do research, I think is very valuable overall. Um, and it teaches you critical thinking skills that can be used pretty much anywhere. Um, and yeah, I think a lot of in terms of the exciting stuff, like the VR stuff, the device that they've shared it looks incredibly cool and um, you, can, you can engage with that, you know, the, what's happening now in the industry and what people are focusing on. So that's something to consider. Um, in terms of my experience uh, with working full-time and studying, you know, if you're working full-time, uh, the day ends at five. And then, you know, you still need to put time into your modules. Maybe you still have to cook dinner, see friends. You know, you have to manage your, your life. Like Maddie said, managing your time is really important, especially when you're working full time. I think that's the best thing I can uh, say and suggest you think about how do I manage my time? How am I going to manage my time? It's definitely possible, um, but you do have to think about it. And yeah, I would also just suggest that if you can, um, find something to do, uh, if it's part-time work or full-time work, or, or even if it's not a complete, like an actual job, while you're doing your honors, uh, find something that you can put your efforts and your time into, uh, just that, that expands your knowledge and your experience that when you actually finish and you go out looking for work and you have something that you can, that is more, more of a, um, a foot in the door. I can say that way. Um, what else? So, if I were to 
I think if, if I were to boil down the advice I can give you if you're thinking about seeing your honors is uh, you should really think about it in relation to your future. What do you want to do? You know, your education is there for a purpose. It's there to enable you to find and do the work that you want to do. Um, I, up until the end of my undergrad, I didn't really think about that. I was like, okay, I'm just, you know, I'm doing, I'm at university, I'm doing university things. I didn't really think about what, what it means after. Um, and I'm very lucky that when I finished, you know, I was able to get a job and multimedia sets you up pretty well to do that. But I wish I had thought about that sooner. Um, so if you haven't asked yourself questions like, what do I want to do? Do I want to be a developer or a designer? Or do I want to work in VR or this or that? You know, what do you want to do? You should start asking yourself that question. And then also ask yourself, what avenues do I know of that will actually help me to get there? Now, if you know, okay, you're super into UI, UX, then what you can do is you can look at the modules available in on see, okay, is that going to help me do that? Is that going to enable me to, to find work and find a position where I can be doing UI, UX and, and do it well, you know? Um, so think about honors in terms of, you know, how it's going to enable you to, to do these things. Um, so the bottom line really is get a sense of where you want to, want to go and how would the uh, things available in honors allow you to, to get there. And also remember, like Nick said at the beginning, there are other modules as well. So uh, from all the IT departments. So look at all of them, see uh, what's interesting to you, what you like, what's going to uh, help you get to where you want to go. And I think use that as a guideline for um, how you how you consider if you want to do honors. Um, yeah, and that's that's about it for me. Thanks. Thank you so much, Bevan. I think, and to both you and Madeline, I think it's super helpful to have a current honors student's perspective, because if you hear it from us, it'll be that you should do it because we're obviously involved and we're still studying. So we're always tell you to study more, but hearing it from someone who's working and studying and is in the thick of things, I think gives you a little bit more of a realistic understanding of what the degree is about. Um, okay, so moving on to the last bit of the presentation, just quickly how to apply if you are an existing student, meaning you are currently an undergraduate third year multimedia student and you will be finishing this year, you can log into the student center, go to admission um, and then internal application and then fill in all the fields. It'll be faculty, department, degree, etc. and so you find multimedia honors and then submit your application. It's as simple as that. You don't have to send a CV. You don't have to send a record. We access all of that from our side. Um, if you are a new student or you've been working for a while and you want to come back, you will have to do an external application, meaning you have to essentially apply to the university as a new student, or at least that's my understanding. If there's a different way of doing it, then please let me know that I'm wrong. Uh, but that's how I understand it. Unless you can still access your student center, in which case you could probably do it that way. And then the closing date for applications is the 30th of November this year. So you're going to have a few months now to think about it, to speak to some more people and then make your decision. If you are doing, if you just want to do a few modules out of the degree, then all you need to do is you need to register for your usual honors degree, whichever one that is, and then register for the extra modules that you want to do. Just something to keep in mind, if you are a BIT student, the module codes are different. So instead of a seven in front of every module code, there is a four in front of every module code. So instead of am I 777, it's am I 477 and so on. Um, so it's important to know that because it's literally a different module that you're registering for, although it's the same module that's taught by the same person. Um, so just keep that in mind because that can confuse things. Things you should know, um, just general things about honors. The classes for multimedia honors tend to run throughout the year, even during recess, because lecturers don't have as much recess as students. So, you know, we just keep going. So, so will you if you're doing honors. And the truth is, if you're doing a full time job, you're probably still working anyway. So it doesn't actually bother you that much. Uh, this, however, does depend on the lecturer and the schedule and the semester and all of those things. Then classes start earlier than undergrad classes. So don't make the mistake next year of waiting until mid-March to find out when your classes start. They usually start beginning of February. Um, so please keep that in mind because we've had people pitch up a month late and then you have missed like two very important classes. 
Um, keep an eye on the UP website, specifically the information science website section um, for the date of the first meeting. It's usually called literally the first meeting uh, where you'll receive all the necessary admin information or you can email me directly next year, maybe mid-Jan, and then I will give you that date once we have the date. One last thing which I forgot to mention, classes are after hours and usually once every two weeks. So for every module that you do, you will have class once every two weeks. That's not necessarily on the same week. So it's not that all your classes are going to be in one week and then you have a week off. It depends on the lecturer, but usually you skip a week for each module. And then lastly, some information about the degree. Um, there's a yearbook, which you can check out the link for. Just You can just Google BIS Multimedia Honors and you'll find the yearbook link or the, the page. And then if you have any other questions, you are welcome to email me or ask them now. I see Dave has his hand up. So do you want to ask something, Dave? Do you, are you interested in doing your honors degree, Dave? You're muted. I said I want to redo my honors degree. <laughs> no, um, I just wanted to add that uh, with the first meeting that we have, it's uh, typically starts uh, like a week or two before usual class starts. So um, just keep an eye out for that. Um, otherwise, you'll miss it and then like you'll end up falling behind on picking up modules and stuff. Yeah. So um, we're basically finished with the presentation for tonight. Are there any questions? If you if you have any questions, please ask them now or email me if you don't ask on, on here. Um, yeah, please go for it. Uh, Campbell, you, if you're in third year currently, you will not have all your third year marks by the closing date, but don't worry, the application will only be sent to me once all those marks are available and then we will confirm. So you'll probably only find out, especially because of this year things being pushed on, you'll probably only find out if you're accepted in early January, um, because that's when we'll have your marks. Because I mean the exams run up to the 15th and then the university closes on the 16th, I think, or the 20th. So you'll find out in January. You, yeah, Dave is right. You will be allowed to attend the first meeting if you haven't heard about, well, you'll know if you're accepted yet, but if you haven't registered yet, you can still attend the first meeting. Uh, can a computer science student take multimedia honors modules as an electives? Yes, that is why this evening was advertised to you guys. Um, you, you can. So you just need to um, check your own degree requirements with regards to how many electives you're allowed to take. I'm not clued up on the computer science honors degree. Um, but you can take some multimedia honors modules. We have had students do that in the past. How does the timetable differ? If you're doing part-time versus full-time, you literally take half your module. If you're doing part-time, you literally take half your modules in one year and the other half in the following year. You pick exactly how you want to split things. Although we always recommend doing the research methodology module in the same year as doing the year project because those are both research heavy and you need those skills. So we always recommend starting off your year with the research methodology because that'll set you up for all the rest of the modules. But the rest is basically up to you in terms of how you split things, split things off. Can informatics students do multimedia honors? The honest truth is, I'm not sure. So I would recommend, Sean, that you email me about that one, and then I will find out and reply to you um, specifically. I'm, I'm not entirely sure about that one. Any other questions? Okay, so I mean, okay. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, that's true. It's nice to see you guys all here. Um, I really hope lots of you decide to take honors. 
Um, I was about to say that you guys are welcome to email me about the degree, but you can also email Dave if you're interested in the HCI stuff or Diffie if you're interested in the virtual reality stuff. Um, you can get information from all of us. So if you want to, you can email me and I'll forward you to the right person. Um, but there's a lot of information and you have some time to think about it. So you, um, so go for that. Okay, so I think I'm gonna close us off. So thank you guys so much for putting aside an hour tonight. Thank you to um, Bevan and Madeline and Diffie and Dave for all the efforts. And um, yeah, I really appreciate your input. And yeah, thanks everyone for joining. I hope you got all the information you needed and then let me know if you have any questions. Okay, I'm gonna end the meeting now, cheers. <laughs>